Hi, we are back. Hello everyone. Welcome back to 5 Minutes Code channel where I will be explaining the solution of every problem of read code and geeks for geeks. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Today's problem is count all triplets with given sum in sorted array, which is marked as a medium level problem. Let's find out what we will be given into this problem and what we have to do. So basically we will be given two parameters. First one is an array ARR of integer type and another one is an integer target. And what we have to do so basically we have to return the count of all triplets such that their sum is equal to target okay all right so basically if we will see this array there are different elements minus three minus one minus one zero one two so we have to tell how what are the triplets like we have to select three indexes such that their sum is equal to target and if uh, the elements of uh, these indices is uh, sum is equal to target i will add one to my answer and i will simply have to return the answer at the last okay all right so if we see here first triplet which we can see is 0 3 4 so 0 index 3 index 4 index okay all right so what is the sum of these triplets minus 3 0 1 it is minus 2 this is minus 2 okay so i have got one count okay all right now i have one count after that if we will see minus three minus one and two so again their sum is equal to minus two target so i will add one more count in this way we have to find the total number of triplets and we have to return the count okay all right and one more thing is basically let's suppose i have got one uh, pair of uh, one triplet that is minus three minus one and two so if i will write down the indices of it it will be zero one and five okay zero one and one two three four five zero one five index okay all right so we cannot select something like one index then zero index then five index it will be duplicate now because it is already covered these indices are already covered so we can only cover it once so that's why it is written i is less than j is less than k otherwise it will be like you can see i is greater than j and uh, less than k in this way so this will not be correct only one triplet one triplet indexes i can take once okay all right i hope this point will be clear as well now let's think of the approach uh, what we should take but before that i just want to ask why should i uh, teach in hindi or in english i think teaching in english uh, helps uh, the students as well helps you guys as well to uh, uh, have a habit how to explain and this will really help you in interviews that's why i explain in english but let me know in comments okay all right so now let's think of the approach so the first approach which is coming in my mind is uh, the brute force approach which is basically to take to use three nested loops and first loop i will be at i second loop uh, i will be have first loop at uh, zero second loop at uh, one and the third loop will start from two okay all right so this loop will first of all cover all the four indices whereas these two will be constant and after that this will be moving to this and again uh, the j k k loop will start from here in this way so we can find that triplet i hope you have got this approach but the time complexity of this will be n q okay and will our constraints allow us to have an cube time complexity no it does not okay because 10 raised to the power 3 are the array size so 10 raised to the power 3 into 3 times and cube is there so it will be 10 raised to the power 9 so if at any time our time complexity is reaching to this point it means i will get tle i will get time limit exceed so we have to skip that okay we have to now optimize our approach okay but here we can see 10 raised to the power 3 so if i will let's say n square time complexity i get so n square time complexity will be 10 raised to the power 6 which is allowed and which is fine so we should search for this solution okay all right so one solution which is coming in my mind which i have already teach taught in one of the video is basically let's suppose i will have the let's suppose i have the sum of all the pairs possible sum of all the pairs possible like minus 3 minus 1 and again minus 3 minus 1 uh, minus 3 0 minus 3 1 minus 3 2 okay all right in this way minus 1 minus 1 and then minus 1 0 and then 0 1 and then 2 in this way i will have calculate all the counts of uh, let's say all the frequencies of some of the pairs and i will add them into a map okay all right and after that what i will do i will again uh, iterate over this whole array and check if let's suppose my current element is minus one 
okay all right my target is minus 2 so i will check ki is there any sum with uh, is there are there any pairs with sum such that target is minus 2 minus uh, this one minus 1 okay so if this if there is any pair in map with these uh, sum so i will simply add my count okay so this is one approach which we can do and which is optimized as well in square time complexity but we uh, but there are two things first of all i will be having some extra space so uh, extra space and second thing is we are not taking advantage of this sorted array we are given the sorted array we are not taking any advantage if let's suppose the array is not sorted then also this will work okay but here array is sorted so we should think of an approach where we can take advantage of it but guys this approach which i have told it's very very nice and i will attach the link of this explanation as well it's a good explanation so make sure you watch it now let's think of another approach the third approach two approaches we have discussed okay okay all right so third approach which is coming in my mind let's suppose let's suppose guys uh, this is an array sorted array and we have to find a pair we have to find pairs such that uh, the pair those pairs sum is equal to target let's twist the problem let's twist the problem okay so this is one array and we have to find count of pairs such that their sum is equal to target okay so what i will do i will first of all have one pointer at minus three i will have another pointer as two okay all right and what i will do i will simply get my sum like what's the sum of i and j and the array is sorted you should keep this in mind okay so array or uh, sum of minus 3 minus 2 is minus 1 okay all right now my target is minus 2 my target is minus 2 and minus 1 our sum is greater our sum is greater than minus 2 so to get any chance of minus 2 sum what i will do i will decrease my j i will decrease my j to i will decrease j minus minus okay all right so now uh, my i will be at this point but my j will be at this point okay all right again i will go again i will check yeah, what's the sum minus 3 and 1 okay so now what is the sum uh, sum is minus 2 sum is minus 2 and my target is equal to minus 2 i have got up here i have got up here okay all right again what i will do let's suppose we are at any other point uh, let's suppose i'm my i is at this point and my my j is at this point let's suppose okay so uh, like there can be different things here i actually this is hmm. let's suppose uh, i my i is at this point okay and my j is at this point all right so what i will do i will have my sum sum is equal to minus 2 plus 1 sum is equal to minus 1 okay all right and my target is equal to 1 so minus 1 is less than 1 2 if we have to get a pair what i have to do i have to increase my i i have to increase my i to 0 okay because look minus 2 is there if i will decrease my j so j now new element will always be less or equal so there is no advantage we have to achieve a higher target my current sum is less than the target so i have to move my i i have to do i plus plus okay now what i've got i have got 0 1 0 and 1 I have got a pair, so I will increase my count. In this way, we can uh, find the count of pairs, okay? Count of pairs whose sum is equal to target. But you will see there will be a catch here. Let's suppose, uh, let's suppose this. 1, 2, 2, 2, okay? All right, and my target is equal to 4. I have to find elements such that their sum is equal to 4, pair, okay? All right, so what I will do? My first point I will add this my second point I will add this sum is what 3 3 is less than 4 so to achieve the 4 I have to increase my i I have to increase my i in this way okay all right now sum is also 4 current sum is 4 and target is also 4 so I have got a pair I have got a pair but the issue is yeah now what should I do should I increase my i or should I decrease my j should I increase my i or should I decrease my j because um, both possibilities can be okay, if I am increasing my i but I have to de in decrease my j so I will miss one some pairs okay so in this way what should I do and uh, uh, that's the good that's a good point so there can be two cases here as well if my i if my i and j are equal let's suppose i and j not uh, elements at i and j are equal so what I will do I will simply 
count how many what are the differences between these so the difference the total number of same elements is 3 okay so what will be the pairs i can get pairs will be n that is 3 into n into n minus 1 by 2 3 pairs i can get 3 pairs okay i can get 3 pairs with uh, 3 elements how uh, let me tell show you i think everyone is with me till this point it's a bit tricky but i'm trying my best so suppose my current at this point and this point and now i'm stuck whether to increase my left or to decrease my right okay so what i will do i will simply check okay i as i told there can be two conditions if element at i and j are equal so first of all we are discussing that so uh, what i will do i will simply check okay, how many elements are equal like i and j are equal so how many elements are between them let's say there are three elements we can see three two okay so what will be the pairs uh, uh, to check like say in three elements if i have to select two elements every time so what will be the count count will be n into n minus one by two i think that's arithmetic progression everyone knows that so uh, let's say total elements are three n into n minus one by two which is equal to three okay so three pairs i can get how let's suppose first one this two with two elements and then this two okay so three elements i can get all right but now suppose let's suppose uh, i have something like one two two three four four okay all right now my target is what uh, my target is six okay so what i will do i have my i here and j here okay uh, target is the current sum is three which is less than target so what i will do uh, i have to increase my i okay i will increase my i sorry target uh, current sum is five current sum is five which is less than six i have to increase my i current i is two and four okay all right now uh, both are equal okay uh, sum i have got my sum which is current sum is equal to six and target is also equal to six okay so what we have to do either i have to increase left or right but here uh, i element and j element are not equal so there is second case okay so if they are not equal what i will do count of elements uh, which is equal to i so there are two elements two twos okay count of elements which is equal to j there are two okay so two i's and two j's so what i will do i will simply multiply them to get the pairs okay so this two is with this pair and then this two pair two okay so total four pairs two into two and in this way we can find the count of pairs such that their sum is equal to target now you will be thinking why i am why i am teaching this guys so if you have got this approach uh, we have also got the approach of this count all triplets because what i will do first of all my i will be let's say let's say constant at this point and i will find the pairs such that i which is at this point and with my j and my k uh, count of pairs such that their target is equal to minus 2 after that I will increase my i now I will be at this point Okay, so I again I will uh, Start my given process which I already explained from this j and this k. Okay, all right again We have we have to count the pairs so there we are counting pairs But here I will count the triplet, but this is constant and we have to only find these two Let's say these two will be variables in this way. We will keep on doing and we will get our answer I hope I have already explained this much and I have already given a lot of time So please subscribe the channel and like the video if you have got the explanation and when I will write the code of it It will become crystal clear to you. Okay. All right Let's move on to the code section then but before that I have made a LinkedIn post whose uh, link is in the pinned comment so make sure to share good comments and show love on that post okay all right now let's move on to the code section first of all what i will do i will take my answer is equal to zero which is my basically count okay all right after that after that what i will do is um, let's take one uh, let's say size let's take size is equal to uh, arr dot length so that i don't have to use this again and again okay what i will do first i will have a for loop int i is equal to 0 i is less than size i plus plus okay all right and this will be my outer loop and inside that what i will do uh, what i have already told i will do that only so if i is equal to this j will be i plus 1 and k will be the last element okay all right let's do that so int j is equal to i plus 1 and k is equal to uh, size minus one okay all right and now what i will do look i have to just implement this binary search between j and k so what i will do while j is less than k 
I will continue this. First of all, what I will do, I will simply get the sum. So int sum is equal to ARR of i plus ARR of j plus ARR of k. Okay, all right. After that, uh, what I have to do? Check the sum. If sum is less than target, so guys, if sum is less than target, what I have to increase? Look, my i is constant. My i is constant. So I have to increase my j because if I will decrease my k, if I will decrease my k, I will get less. There is chance of getting less than current sum. But I won't have to have greater than current sum. So I will do simply j plus plus. Okay, all right. Otherwise, if let's suppose my sum is greater than target, in that case, what I have to do? Now what I have to do, I have to increase my, I have to decrease my sum. To decrease my sum, i is constant. I can only decrease the k. Okay, because k is at the last, k minus one. Okay, all right. Now there is a chance. Now there is a uh, two cases which I have already told. We have to implement those two cases. Okay, all right. So uh, let's see how we are going to implement that. Uh, let's take. E1 element 1 is equal to let's suppose ARR of left. Just give me a minute. ARR of left. Okay. Uh, left is not there. It is basically J. And E2 is equal to ARR of K. Okay. And now uh, if you remember I told two conditions. Let's suppose first of all count the number of elements which is equal to E1 and count of element which is equal to E2. Okay. So how we will do while J is less than equal to K and then ARR of J is equal to E1 element 1. What I will do? I have to take counts, two counts. So C1 is equal to 0 and C2 is equal to 0 as well. Okay. So uh, like I have to check how many elements are equal to E1. Okay, so first one, if I have got, I will simply do C1 plus plus and I will increase my J as well. Okay, all right. Similarly, I have to count total number of elements is equal to E2. So while J is less than equal to K and then ARR of K is equal to E2, what I will do? I will simply uh, increase my count C2 plus plus and and k minus minus okay all right uh, we are good at this point now if you remember what i told there are two conditions if e1 is equal to e2 okay so let me write if e1 is equal to e2 what i have to do i have to increase my answer by uh, guys i want you to remember if e1 is equal to e2 what i will do i will simply have to do n into n minus 1 by 2 in that case look in that case both C1 and C2 will be same. So what I will do? C1 into C1 plus 1. It's basically n into n. Uh, sorry, it will be n into n minus 1. Okay. And by 2. So this will be my answer and it will be incremented. So I will do answer plus. Otherwise, otherwise what I have to do? I have to simply do, if you remember what I told, C1 into C2. So answer plus is equal to C1 into C2. Okay. All right. And that's it, guys. That's it. We will simply come out of this loop here and we will simply return the answer. Let's try to compile this once to check if it is getting accepted or not. I think I have given my best to explain this by breaking it down as well. So let's submit this. If you have loved the explanation, please subscribe the channel and like the video and sit with a pen and paper and try to get this approach once again. I am totally agree it is a bit tricky so you can take pen and paper okay all right this and i am going to see you again tomorrow till then keep on coding and bye